Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to this game's tutorial. In this one, we actually create some projectiles. So, if you take a look at the scene right now, last episode, we were actually creating some enemies and they were about to disappear like right away because um, we, were, we were pretty much just calling the remove enemy function on them. Now, we're actually going to have a floating projectile shot straight at them and then once it reaches the destination, they actually disappear. So now it actually looks like and um, some kind of tower defense game. So guys, that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so last episode we actually started spawning stuff around the tower and then as you can see they start disappearing because we, um, we pretty much just start killing them as soon as they spawn. So inside of our update for the tower, Let's boot this up. It's out of the tower update. We have this function over here. I'm just going to remove debug.log. We have this function that pretty much look for enemy, then find it which one is the closest, and then it shoots it. But it doesn't really shoot it. It actually simply finds its enemy component and then call the remove enemy function, which we've made, and it pretty much just take care of removing the enemy from the map. But now, in this episode, what we're going to do is actually change this up. So we're going to Go ahead and just remove this, so I'm going to put this in comment. And instead, we are going to actually shoot an enemy. Okay, so how exactly should we do that? Now, there is a few things that we're going to have to create, um, including a function, which I'll just put below the update. So I'll, I'll do just a little bit of spacing here, and I'll create a function called private void shoot enemy, which is going to take in parameter a transform that I'll call target like so and we will go ahead and just replace what we had before so this line we are going to replace that by shoot enemy and we're going to be shooting call at the closest index dot transform which is what we had before okay so now we've got our function shoot enemy and how exactly should we shoot an enemy now since we're making a game, we want this to be uh, visually appealing, we're going to need something else. We're going to need something more than simply the tower and then the enemy just disappearing. So I was thinking about actually creating some kind of projectile. So say you have an arrow, and that arrow itself knows how much damage it's supposed to deal and knows where exactly it is supposed to land. And that's the kind of model I'm going for right here. So we're going to create a new class, a new uh, component, and also a new object called projectile. And that projectile is going to hold information um, such as the damage and also the target. So let's go ahead and do just that. I am going to create a new folder under prefab. Call this projectile. And um, for a projectile, I'll just right now, since we're not really good on the models, I'm going to be creating a sphere so we can differentiate them. So here is my model. A simple sphere, maybe scale it down to say um, 0.3. On each axis, I'm going to remove the collider. I don't actually need it, and it's going to save some um, some CPU cycle. Okay, so we've got our sphere. I'm going to name this tiny projectile. Might add some more later on, so maybe a big projectiles or a splash projectile. All of that is available to us later on. So let's go ahead and just add a new component to this guy that we're going to call projectile. And there is quite a few things to do in this one, so before we even get started coding, let's actually drag and drop it inside of the projectile folder. So we have some kind of prefab here. Okay, so I removed it from the scene, now I'm going to double click on the projectile script and we are going to get started. So as always, let's clean this up. And what exactly do we need to do here? We are going to need a private float, which is going to keep track of the damage. A private transform, which is going to keep track of the target. And also let's have a boolean that says uh, is launch. So we know if um, we know if the projectile itself is actually flying towards the target. And also a private vector3 start position. Or do we actually need a start position? I don't think we need one. Let's uh, never mind that for now. If we need it, we'll just put it later on. Okay, so I'm not going to be using the start on this one. 
instead of using the start, I'm actually going to use a public function that I'll be calling from somewhere else. And that public function is going to be called um, launch projectile, just like this. It's going to take in a transform target and also a float damage. And now the reason I'm not using the start to do this is because I might actually want to do something in between the uh, the moment I instantiate this object and the moment I launch it. So maybe set some additional parameters. But that's of course not what we're going to be doing now. Um, it's just it's just a gate that we might actually use a little bit later on. So we don't want to close that opportunity to actually put something in there. And um, in our launch projectile, we're going to say this dot target is equal to target and this dot damage is equal to damage. So we're, we're pretty much just setting the member field of that class. And after that, we're going to say is launch is equal to true. Okay. Now, in a update, private void update, we're going to check first, are you launched? So if you're not launched, so if is not launch, we're going to return. We don't need to do anything in the update if this projectile is not launched. Now we're going to be doing transform.position is going to equal vector3.move towards. So we're going to be taking um, our current position, that is transform.position, and we're going to be taking the target, which is target.position, and then a speed. So we're going to be moving from our current position towards the target at, say, a speed of 12.5. Um, this this going to be fast. It's actually an arrow, so it got to go super fast and once we've got this we can actually do transform dot look at we're looking at the target and this is going to take care of the whole rotation thing now since we have a sphere we're not really going to be seeing the rotation right now but say if you have an arrow it would actually be pointing the forward of that arrow towards the actual target so um if you have a, if you have an arrow model just make sure that the dipper is actually on the Z axis, so the forward axis in Unity. Okay. And um, let's actually check. So if vector 3 the distance in between the transform the position and the target dot position, if that distance is now smaller than one, that means we pretty much just reach our destination and we are going to call something else. So maybe a function called on arrival, like so. And since we don't have it, we're going to declare it down here. So private void on arrival. And this one is pretty much going to say, well, okay, so we we pretty much finished our uh, trajectory. We reach the enemy, so we're going to be doing damage to the guy. And we're also going to be destroying our own projectile. So destroy game object. But before that, like I said, we're going to say, um, we're going to tell the enemy that he's taking damage. So there is multiple way we could do this. We could do a send message. We could do a uh, get component, and let's actually do the latest one. So target dot get component. We're gonna get the enemy component. Once we've got that enemy component, um, we could say dot hit point minus equal damage, but that's not really efficient. Say we want to add something a little bit later on, uh, such as a action when you take damage it does an actual splash effect around the play around the uh, the enemy then that would not really work because we'd have to code everything on this function and it does not really make any sense so what I feel like doing is actually go back instead of the enemy script so let's find it it is around here and inside of the enemy script I'm going to create a public function so right about here public void take damage which is going to take in a float damage amount or just amount now inside of here we are going to do hit point minus equal amount and let's actually do if hit point is smaller or equal to zero then we're gonna call remove enemy so this way we actually check if we're dead at the very same time okay so back on our projectile now we can say get component dot take damage and we're gonna send our damage field like this okay so this looks pretty good actually 
Now all we got to do is actually spam this because right here we showed the enemy but nothing really happens. Now in here we get to say okay we instantiate a uh, tiny projectile the prefab. So we need the prefab. Uh, let's go back up here. Say right about there. Public game object projectile prefab. Okay, back to the shoot function now. So projectile prefab, we're gonna do instantiate. Projectile prefab. So let's do just for now, just to test this out, vector3.0 and then quaternion.identity. So just to test it out, right now we're only spawning this, and after that, once we actually spawn this, we need to get the projectile. So I'm going to be storing this inside of a game object that I call geo. And let's actually cast this as a game object as well. Then we need a projectile, so projectile p is equal to geo.getComponent. We're getting the projectile component. And after that, p.launchProjectile, we're launching at the target and we're also adding our own damage. In this case, that would be um, tower stats at the index in stat dot damage. Now we have crit damage to calculate a little bit later on, but um, right now we're just doing the projectile. Of course, we're going to be coming back to this really, really shortly. Okay, so this should actually work in theory, and it should be a nice test for us. So I'm going to, well, first off, I'm going to go on the tower script. Make sure you assign the tiny projectile to the projectile prefab. We might want to turn this into an array a little bit later on when we have more projectile. Just an idea like that. And we are going to go ahead and just boot this. Go inside the game, and now if I press A, as you can tell, we're actually shooting and this seems to work perfectly. Now there's only one thing that bothers me quite a lot and that is the position we're creating our sphere at. So right now it's starting from vector 3.0 and instead of doing that I'd like to actually be spawning at the height of the tower so maybe around... Uh, let me just try this really quickly. Here it is. So instead of spawning at 0, 0, 0 like this I'd like this to be uh, right now it's facing this enemy in the back here so I'd like this to be around there so in order to achieve that we'd have to say okay so you're gonna take the Y of the um, tower height so instead of spawning at 0 0 0 we're gonna be spawning at 0 and then maybe um, 2.3 in this case in Y and then we're also going to take the direction in between the tower and the enemy and then normalize that so we uh, it is actually over here instead of being right in the center or it could actually be right in the center but um, well since we can put it here let's just let's just go ahead and put it here we have the values and we can actually do the mats okay so it is going to be inside of our shoot enemy we're going to say vector 3 um, projectile spawn point is equal to target dot position dot normalize. I am going to normalize the direction um, from the tower to the target's position and that's pretty much what I'm doing here. And right after that I'm going to say projectile spawn point dot y is equal to get tower height. And we're going to be spawning our or I mean instantiating our projectile prefab right here. Okay, so having this um, completed now, let's go ahead and just press play, have a look. Oh, I'm going to be starting from the preloader. Okay, so let's go in here, press play. And as you can tell, we now get this nice start position. We might actually want to give it a small offset so it doesn't spawn right in the middle of the height, so like we're spawning right about here at the moment. We could say um, minus one and actually spawn right there. But it's really up to you at this point. I don't really mind the fact that it's spawning up there because we don't see it since it's pretty much really fast. And this actually works quite well, guys. So 
I am going to end on this note. Alright, so if you guys enjoyed this video or you learned something, please leave me a like. I really appreciate it, um, as always. And if you have any question or comment, you can always leave them in the comment section below. And I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Else, please subscribe for more tutorials like these. And I will be seeing you guys in the next episode.